I am not excited for the end of my night, I gotta say. I am going home uh, to a girl that I'm seeing who I just talked to on the phone a few minutes ago, and she was crying. And I asked her what's wrong, and she said, I feel fat. I was like, oh no, why did this happen? I was like, you're not fat, why are you even saying this? She was like, I was just on Instagram, and there's a girl on there, and she's got a six pack, and now I feel fat. I'm like, that's something that only women do, right? They see somebody slightly better than them and it ruins their whole day. Like, I'm six foot four. I'm pretty tall by most people's standards. I don't go to NBA games and come home like, I feel short. Like, I feel so short. I thought I was tall and then I got there and they were all seven feet and this is just gross. I feel disgusting. Tomorrow I get back on vegetables and I get back on stretching, right? I'm gonna drink a lot of milk. I'm growing. Monday, I start growing again. Joe Prano is on the Adam Carolla Show. <laughs> Jay Moore, Joe Prano in studio. Uh, Jay's got a movie, Sweet Dreams, and then Joe's got a podcast, Dirty Sports, and Joe's got some news That's right. as well. First one here, Ontario resident who wants both a vagina and a penis wins public funding for unique surgery. This is Ontario, Canada. That's right. Oh. It's Ontario, <laughs> California. That guy wants three penises but no vagines, right? <laughs> well, who doesn't want that, right? I'm saying if you're from Ontario, California, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't conquer the inland empire with a Ontel- <laughs> Ontario, a bunch of white guys in Japanese cars acting Puerto Rican. Yes, that's Ontario. Yeah. But this Named is Rusty. Canada. Yeah, all right. So he gets a vagina and a penis. That's right. And then at some point, someone's like, you're pregnant. And he's like, yeah, I tripped down some stairs. <laughs> I have mommy parts and daddy That's parts. That's right. Jesus Christ. So it's a well, the dude pu- the who wants a vagina. Pay for it. The Too, public's going to pay for denying it. Denying the procedure would infringe on the person's charter-protected right to security of the person. But I don't get why the public has to pay for all this stuff. My <laughs> yeah. feeling is like, if you want to do it, do it. I tell everyone in California, we're about five years behind Canada. So if this is what you're looking for, this is your fucking future. If this is where you want to go, keep going. Because that's where we're going. It sounds like, Joe, in the story that they granted this because it was a creative, the most creative surgery. Is that what what you said? Uh, The unanimous decision by a three-member panel of judges uh, could expand access to a novel, quote, bottom surgery. For people who identify as non-binary, me- uh, meaning neither so th- fully male nor fully female. They have a penis, and they're going to add a vagina? That's correct. All right. Has a penis seeking a vagina. Well, says. then he can go fuck himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little on the nose, Jesus but yeah. Christ. You want to talk about, like, if you meet a dude or a female at a bar, and you're bringing them home... And, you know, you have to have, like, certain discussions, Yeah. you know, before you go to their apartment. Like, yeah. are you allergic to cats? <laughs> I got a cat. You know what I mean? There's a herpes discussion. But both parts, you you got to delve into that before the fucking skirt comes off, right? But before <laughs> the panties, as Bobby Hollander would say, before yeah. the pantyhose drops, you're going to have to have that discussion with your partner, your potential new partner, Men, right? grab your lube. Women, grab your vaginas. That's if you right. have both, I guess, grab both. Grab both. <laughs> grab a tire iron. <laughs> so when is science going to make the parts actually look attractive? Because it always looks yeah. like they've been in a car accident and went through a windshield. <laughs> I I think, I, you know, I was talking about that with Dr. <laughs> Drew. I don't want to be insensitive. I'm not going to have a Dr. Drew. But I I have, and, by, and by the way, I have zero point of reference. I'm just imagining. No, it's, it's it a, looks like a thumb. It's like a, I hit it with a hammer. I agree with you. It's a two-way street because, you know, they when they were talking about Harvey Weinstein, they were going, his his penis was disgusting. It was like sewed on to his side leg. And whenever they're talking about Michael Jackson or whoever, they're describing their dicks as oh, there's something wrong with it, or it was bent, or it had a dog leg in it or something. But never, no one ever goes, that chick snatch looked like a sea urchin with an M80 in it, all right? It had a beak. <laughs> yeah. Like, they never fucking do that. Why don't we talk shit about their snatch? It, it, looked like a, it looked like somebody took a BB gun to an origami swan. That's right. <laughs> Man. All right, so he's got both parts. Uh, you're right, we've not worked it out. 
yet. I think we're kind of we're sort of where boob jobs were in the 50s and are you like me like, like when you find out somebody was gender reassigned my first thought is well let me let me see yeah like just curiosity yes like, I'm exactly me, like you jay yeah. yeah like well let me see it okay oh they gave you a cock let yeah me see. let me see a good looking cock like what did, what did they do for you do you think that too i'm also I mean, I don't the way say it. the way they construct it like we take oh, the they, urethra like, and we, we take the clitoris and we get a fishing knife and we you know, and they it's Can you imagine like, a penis as sensitive as a clitoris. And oh we, my we God, you just come constantly. And they take, they graft skin from the calf, and then they sew it on. And like they, I wasn't burned. They, yeah, yeah, it's, it's it sounds. Somebody bad. throw grits in my lap. Yeah. Anyway, Canada. Good luck. Because <laughs> it's on. Yeah. And tax. If you had funded. to move anywhere in the United States. Like people flee L.A. to move. Mm -hmm. Austin and Nashville seem to be the two places. But I got to be near the ocean. Oh, yeah. That's right. Hey. I, I feel like San Diego right. seems like up your uh, grouchy alley. Yeah, grouchy alley. Sean <laughs> 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 <Shauna> Grant Nickman. <laughs> After. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because the ocean is tough. Because it's so there. And it, 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 I it, you're I could do part Tampa. of it. I could do Tampa, West mm -hmm. Palm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of nice Floridian oceans there. But you can't go anywhere. You're set. Yeah. You're good. Um, sorry, what else? Uh, Nike is being slammed for their skimpy Team USA women's track and field uniforms for the Olympics. Uh, They've always been skimpy. Yeah. These, yeah. Ones, these ones have a bikini-like bottom. My hoo-ha is going to be out. Oh, they're doing a Yours? bikini. That, by the way, that's, that's the a, most that's I've ever seen them wear because there's a, it covers the belly. Mm. Usually it's just uh, yeah, there's you got, nothing You just there. had the, the sport... Sports bra and the that bottom. looks like bathing suits from the 1920s. Like this is awful. <laughs> With the zipper. Oh, up front. that was the greatest. Come to Atlantic City. There was a great norm. Please. There was a great oh. norm joke in uh, the first season of Family Guy, and when Norm was death for the first season, and then somehow I took over for death on on um, Family Guy. But Norm. God, I think you can find it. Norm went to go visit Peter Griffin as death. And and an episode, first season. I think it was the first season. And he showed up, and Peter, like, opened the door and saw death standing there and went like, oh, my God, and like, just took off and running. <laughs> just took off running. And Norm said, uh, I caught Flojo. You don't think I could catch you? <laughs> and it was good. such a Norm... We can find it. Well, try it. Let's see what that sounds like. These are uh, not, I mean, I don't want to speak ill of Nike. The company has been accused of sexism since unveiling the kit at oh, that's, Nike Air Event on Thursday. I think that's like covering up. Well, Flojo did wear the two-piece, right? Yeah. I guess they're Half saying the that the ass the, is the, always the, hanging out the back. It was like, uh, to be fair. It's like more of a boy short. They kind ran of thing. in like period panties. Yeah. Like yeah. those are the yeah. period panties. Yeah. And then a crop top. We'll just pull right? up a picture of Flo Joe since we're bossing the uh, graphics folks around. Yeah. All right. Flo Joe. But see, uh, see if I have any heater on here. I don't know. It, it, there's Go no the such thing as coming out with anything anymore where you're not accused of something. Right. Right. I mean, that's kind of, yeah, that's that's kind of where we are. That's way less. Yeah, I agree. And this is in the 80s. That sure is. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Look at that athlete. Yeah. She's the best. Look at the abs. Yeah. Oh, full head of fucking hair. And that, uh, and that OJ beard. Oh, it's beautiful. Hero. Literally died at 41 or something. Mm. Just like had a heart attack and died. The, 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 why bother getting in shape if this is your fate? <laughs> yeah. you, you know what I mean. I mean, I mean you think that's almost, a steroid-related uh, death? I or don't. A, I don't think Ozempic. so. I don't. Ozempic. I don't. I don't know. I mean, you can find out. You can find the Family Guy, and you can also find out when she died. She died in her forties. She just died. Oh, here oh, you go. I got the clip. Good like, job, guys. Now. Good job. Hey, uh, Death, you, you got a file on me? Yeah, somewhere. It's in the car, I think. Is it mentioned that I ran two weeks of junior varsity track? Uh, let's not do this. Hey, look, I caught flow, Joe. You don't think I can catch you? Ah, ah, my ankle! Ah! <laughs> yeah, listen, don't help or anything. I'm totally fine. Damn Irish.
I got a B plus in health. Is there anything I can do? Yeah, why don't you boil some water and rip up some sheets there, Einstein? It's a sprained ankle. I just have to stay off it for a few days. Wait, wait, wait. You can't stay here. Why not? You're trying to kill me. Besides, how are we supposed to explain you to Mr. Roper? Hey, uh, <laughs> make yourself at home, Death. I'm, uh, I'm going out for a little while. Hey, wait, wait. You can't tell anyone I'm here. For if humanity discovers I'm no longer lurking in the shadows, the consequences will be dire. I love Norm as the voice of uh, the pigeon on Mike Tyson Mysteries. Oh, yeah. It's brilliant. I do love a big labia. Flo Jo <laughs> died in 98. She was 38 years old. Wow. Oh, wow. In her 30s. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And Pour what one shape out. she Pour was one in. for the homies that aren't here. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. What else? We Just got died here? in her sleep. Uh, Netflix. Yeah. Oh, is, that's good. Netflix is shifting away from big budget <laughs> oh. action flicks and big name stars. Mm. Tired of seeing the same action movie on Netflix over and over. Netflix knows and they're working on it. High octane action films backed by big name casts have dominated Netflix. Uh, the company's new film chief now wants to change that. It might have something to do with Mark Wahlberg. In 2020, Netflix, Netflix paid him a whopping $30 million to star in Spencer Confidential, which clocks at 24th of the highest, the 24th highest paid film role of all time. Critics pan the action thriller. Hmm. Hey, uh, Netflix, here's a solution. How about I do a one-man show about having an intervention, going to rehab, and getting sober, and I'll, hey, I'll do it for $3 million. Yeah. Save Mighty white money. Yeah. I'll Mighty save you guys $27 million. <laughs> that it's could be the, the title of it could be Mighty White of Me. Yeah. With Jay Moore. Don't, I don't need any help getting canceled, Ace. When are you going to do your next special? Uh, I just, I just kind of don't care. Yeah. I just kind of bob around in life. I'm like a bobber on a lake, just kind of floating there. I just go with the flow. I do gigs. I go out every other weekend. Mm-hmm. Do a movie. Like, you and I talked about this on the set of Dumbbells, I think. It's like, we like to work hard. You said something that stuck with me forever. I like to work really hard once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, the guy's a genius. I think I was talking about sex. That's, well, that also. It's like, the guy's a genius. It's, it's like, and then you, we were talking about this, me and you. It's like, that's why stand-up's perfect. It's like, okay, I'm going to just watch TV all day, take a nap or two. Maybe I'll take a steam. I'll order some food. Then I'm going to work really hard for an hour. Right. Then I'm going to go back to my hotel room, and then I'm going to have a week off. Then I'm going to do a bit part in a movie over here. You know what? I'm going to write a book and go all in on this book. And then I'm done, and then I got three months off. Yeah. Then a neighbor goes, hey, when am I going to see you in a movie? Then I yell at my agent. Then I get in a movie. Right. It's like, it's the best life. No, You'll I... You'll get there, Joe. Hang in there. I agree. I it's agree. It's the best life. But well, you, you had to be a civilian for a while, and you had to know what work was, and you had to kind of come from work. Well, you know work. Like, I mean, I was a waiter, and then I just started doing stand-up. I mean, I was getting paid, paid, 19, 20. Wow. Like, my first... I made a million at 20. Really? Yeah. Shauna Grant made one seven when she was 20. But well, she's a lot ta more talented than <laughs> dead me. Dead at 21. Wow. A million? Yeah. How? Well, I, How I went out happen? every single weekend. Every and then single you, weekend made a million dollars in that year doing stand-up. I mean, I never... And I was doing a lot of colleges. Mm-hmm. You know, so it just adds up. And then you, then it's like... Yeah. Then you do like a pilot for like 50... Yeah, yeah. The, you know, holding deal. Yeah, yeah. I never had a holding deal. Oh, you never had a holding I deal? I never They're wanted... They're the best. I never... You know, I can't... I gotta be able... I'm like a beagle sniffing the ground. I gotta go <laughs> check out the next yard. Yeah, well, holding deals like someone just gives you 300 grand and goes, don't do anything for yeah, a while. I can't. And you go, all right. That's you know, it's my dream. That. That's when all I, I want to do. When I met with Michael Eisner for the ABC, for the Kimmel, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is a lot of money. And then they got to the part where I have two weeks off. Right. And it it's work. It, I just, I can't. I, I can't agree. know that I have to be, like, when I watch The Office, I actually get a low-grade angst mm -hmm. watching people go to the office and seeing the same eight people all the time. I haven't seen you in three months. That's why we're always happy to see each other. Yeah. When are we seeing each other again on the floor of the Lakers? Uh, again? Buddy, I got you. you don't, got don't, don't be a I nudge. need dates. I could be out of town. I'm trying to figure it's this out. It's not my problem. I know, but it'll be 
Go NBA.com. Look up the schedule. <laughs> we got to right. go through the Pelicans first. All right. Get through the Pelicans. So, you know, they, you were saying work hard for short periods of time. That's actually like a very LeBron James end of his career yeah. strategy. He's like, he kind of like waits around. He's very calm. He's very, you know, he doesn't, and then he bursts for a few minutes and takes over the game. So the, the most elite athlete in the world is on your the work great, hard regimen. The great Sugar Ray Leonard beat Marvin Hagler <laughs> basically because he said, corner, tell me when there's 30 seconds left in this round. Yeah. He just bopped around Brrr. for two and a half minutes, and then last 30, pop, 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 wins the round, goes back to the corner. That's how I wrestled. That's how you wrestled. That's how I wrestled. I'd be on the bottom. I'd stall. I'd get called for a stalling warning, and then I'd just do two sit-outs and do a fat guy roll and just good night. Pow. Yeah. All right. What else we and got? Yeah, that is kind of like sex, right? Yeah. Fat like, guy mm, roll. Fat you go on top. I'm relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> Critics are calling out the plastics injury in industry over fraud of plastic recycling. Whoa! No! I know. Finally, someone's talking about it. Only about 5 to 6% of plastics are actually recycled, according to the Department of Energy. The rest ends up in landfills or is burned. <laughs> Nothing ever works out. I mean, it's all, all – every idea is, is a good idea with a bad result. Just all these commercials you see and all the things. See all these commercials, the water bottle, and then turned into a wind chime, you know, a dream catcher for your young child. It's, it's, it's always shit. It always ends up on some beach in some war-torn place with some people walking around scavenging yeah. and burned. It's just all – It's every, every, every – Everything reading, we do is to make us feel good about what yeah. we're doing. I'm that's reading that's this all book, we do. I'm reading this book right now, Material World, the six, mm -hmm. the six elements that change civilization. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. sand, oil, copper, lithium, uh, and other stuff. Oh, it's not the, not the Madonna biography? No. Okay. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> very nice. It took me a second. Uh, Jay, Jay did a little deer in a fart light there. For he did a half a. I got beat picked up. off at first. He got me. <laughs> he got, the pickoff. No, he, he was caught leaning. Andy he, he got caught over leaning, here. and he was thinking about trying for second because yeah. he got always picked. Always thinking yeah. about second. Yeah. If always I'm on first, I'm going. Thinking about second. second. Oh, I'm right. not thinking about it. I'm going. Sorry for the Madonna joke. And. Uh, and it's like people go like, oh, you know, we're going to get off like uh, fossil fuels and then we're going to have renewable energy. It's like, yeah, but to dig for, you know, the lithium to make the batteries for the wind turbines, you have to move a, an aircraft carrier literally of Earth to get a one chip for like one phone. Right. So it's we're doomed either way. We're going to run out of water in 100 years. So everybody just relax. Right. But it's all, for us, it's just sort of feel-good shit. I mean, nothing yeah. ever works. I'm recycling. Yes, I'm recycling. Yeah. I want to know how they pick the, the 5 to 6%. Like, is it a specific 5 to 6%? They're like, oh, we'll just do the cans. It's definitely not the bottles filled with piss right. by the side of <laughs> yeah. my fucking street. That's, <laughs> nice. That ain't it. By the way, that's a horrible uh, margin of error, 5 to 6%. It's yeah. Like, well, just say 5.5%. Yeah. You'll, we'll have it. <laughs> Government phonies. Yeah, nothing works. It's all sad. I'm writing myself in on the next presidential ballot. We're, we're back to OJ. The uh, executor named in OJ Simpson's will says he'll do everything to ensure the Goldman family gets zero from oh, the estate. It just never stops. That's awesome. It's OJ fucking, these motherfuckers. She was 18 when he, when he met her, and he just... I'd love to. He just <laughs> met her at a club, you know, like an exclusive club where she yeah. was cocktailing yeah. at 18. And he just said, oh, who's that? And then went, all right, that's 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 OJ, mine. OJ would like to see you. And then uh, she had the world's worst roommate because I was just watching this last night. <laughs> um, she went on a first date with OJ at 18. Now, he was still married and had kids mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But he, right. He just went on a date. Her roommate. It was like, did you see that beard? <laughs> came home <laughs> and said her pants were torn. And said, like, what happened to you on this first date? And he's like, well, he was pretty aggressive, but don't worry about it. Literally tore through denim it, on the first date, according to the roommate. And then OJ put her up with a car and an apartment and sort of put her over there. And then I guess they got married after that. But uh, tore the jeans, tore the jeans on the first date. Is but the now, executor named? 
Uh, let's see here. I mean, that's it's like uh, these motherfuckers. Filed by Cassidy Law Offices. Mm-hmm. Simpsons longtime lawyer Malcolm Laverne <laughs> is a Shamil. <laughs> uh, he, but this is this is the uh, he says he'll do everything to make sure the Goldman family gets zero. So there's also the you know Nicole and her terrible decisions. This guy was just returning glasses. Oh God. I mean, yeah. It's too bad the only picture that exists of him is a picture looking like he was trying to fuck her. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's got the 80s or 90s, like, bandana and the two earrings. Yeah. And you go, okay. And then someone goes, oh, he was returning her glasses. And you go, right. right, right. <laughs> He's trying to fuck I mean, I'm not saying OJ's right, but he is, was right about it. You know, because you did all they have is the bad 90s modeling picture of him looking like a Lothario who's trying to fuck a hot blonde by like like some like the middle aged fat guy named Lou was like, I'll return the glasses no, and he no. was like, Oh no, 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 no I got, got it. Lou. And then he goes by the bathroom, he's gargling with Lavoris, you know, and slapping on the high karate. He's like, All right, <laughs> Ace, I got the, this. I got it. At the it. same time, me and Ace go, No, no, no. Nah, right, right, I was right. there. Lou, come on. Lou, come on. I'll take this. Nah, I'll Lou. run him up. I'll run him by the house. Yeah, I'm in my uh, I'm in my forerunner. I'll just I'll just run Yeah, him. I'm going up that way anyway. I got my new forerunner. Yeah. With my vanity plate that say gator. <laughs> and nobody had I mean, nobody, but nobody <laughs> knows if there was any right. there, but there wasn't anything between them. That's just there's only pictures of him looking like that guy. Cato recognized him from auditions and was like, fuck this guy. Yeah. Take him out, OJ. He was a black belt, I understand, right? Ron Goldman? Oh, there was some story about him having some skill that don't get that jujitsu training. Don't forget. Bring, don't bring karate to a knife fight. I saw some right. comic Ron. I forget his last name, but he saw some clip on Instagram. He goes, "Yeah, I took karate. They, what they don't, then I got jumped. And what they don't tell you is karate only works if you're against another karate motherfucker." Oh <laughs> right. Oh yeah, we are acting it out. Like, oh, there's a if you just two guys in stances. Oh, you kind of all right now, Dawson. G-I. You got to find Black Belt Adam. Because there's a whole movie, basically the Foot Fist Way, yeah, was a movie that was made essentially after like a three minute man show bit I did called uh, Black Belt Animal. Though I can't prove it, but um, we <laughs> did. I'll show you Black you Belt. Animal, but there's a there's a quick scene in it where we sort of go over this. I see that picture. I this, just think achy breaky heart. Oh uh, yeah, that's yeah, American. Look good, Ace. <laughs> My name? Sensei Adam. I am going to teach you the art of karate. Rear front kick. Left, right, cabbage patch, eagle death claw. Yeah. Let me give you a real world scenario. Let's say you're in the milk line at school and bully comes up behind you once you're change. Let's say you're at the beach with your best girl and a guy comes up and kicks sand in your face. Let's say you're at a bar tilting a couple of cold ones after work with your buddy and some drunken townie thinks you've been making eyes at his bitch. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Alright, now you'll see the display of exactly what you were talking about. You're at a cockfight. A couple of the Tijuana locals think you've been winning just a little too much. <laughs> Let's say you're on the street and a bad guy pulls this is a what knife I'm talking on about. you. <laughs> but, he, but, he, uh, but he holds it more forward. <laughs> <laughs> and now he does that thing where, uh, where he taunts you by throwing it back and forth from one hand to the other. But a little smaller, a little, a little smaller, but faster. <laughs> Huzzah! 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 Ow! Oh! Ooh. Oh! Ooh. You were at a strip club, and one of the Bettys just told the bouncer you gave her the magic thumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got it. Hey! 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. It reminded me of that sand that in the face. Has that ever actually happened? The kicking the sand. It's like yeah. a go-to bully literary reference, but I don't know if it's ever like I don't know. If, first of all, I don't think it's bullies like hang a, at the beach. It's a Joe Weeder thing. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, Charles Atlas. Yeah, Charles Atlas. Like you, you take your scrawny ass to the beach, and then the big buff guy kicks sand. Yeah, bullies don't just roam girlfriend. around looking for guys to kick. Like who's I've never and then seen also, sand. They didn't give they didn't give women a lot of credit back then because then you're just sitting on a towel with your girlfriend of four years and this guy kicks sand in your face and she's like I gotta go suck his cock now <laughs> <laughs> like sorry oh, you didn't have you a good let defense that happen. you didn't have a good defense against sand yeah, no I'm one like, really has a good defense Bruce Lee couldn't stop sand I'm laying here you with know? my eyes closed how yeah, do I stop well, sand in my face I can't stop sand yeah yeah they kick sand on you I sent away for the Charles Atlas stuff it was in the ads were in Pro Wrestling Illustrated magazine oh really and it was just isometrics There's, it's nothing it, it's they, nothing they you send get, you what nothing. do you get in the mail it's a it's a little booklet like when you go to Vegas and they leave in your room the booklet of like coupons mm-hmm. it was like that uh-huh. but each page was like alright for your biceps put your elbow in the palm of your hand and push for 20 seconds this is for my bicep oh it's like you're in prison or like just push push here isometric uh, yeah. it was all isometric Wow. Yeah. All right. Uh, but hey, we need to take a check it out. Break. It works. <laughs> <laughs> that and the Kilimanjaro. The um, Garrick was supposed to call in, but he's not around. But that's fine. We got more news stuff we can do. I right. can't believe that's so, fucking OJ news. That well, makes me sad. Right, why don't we take a quick break? We'll come back, we'll finish up the news right after this. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts, O'Reilly Auto Parts. They're in the business of keeping your car on the road. They offer friendly, helpful service and the parts, knowledge, and everything else you need to maintain and repair your vehicle. They've got thousands of parts and accessories in stock, either in store or online. You never have to worry if you're in a jam. They got your part. The team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free in or out of your car. It's nice not to have to yank that thing. If it needs to be replaced, they'll help you find the right battery for your vehicle. Need your windshield wipers replaced, brake light fixed, or quick service? They'll help you find the right parts or point you in the nearest local uh, repair shop so uh, you can have the pros do it. Whether you're a car aficionado or an auto novice, you'll find the employees at O'Reilly Auto Parts are knowledgeable, helpful, and all friendly. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are your one-stop shop for all things auto. Do it yourself. And you can find out what you need in-store or online. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today or you can give them a visit O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, brother, I think you hit the fucking nail on the head right there. Let's bring these Israelis to Baja, California. We love them and we want them. Let's bring them here, buddy. I think you're on to something. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Jay Moore is in the studio. Look at you, solving world issues. Joe Prano. Yeah, it was a whole chapter in one of my books. It's old. I, I've, said, I've said it for 25, almost 30 years. Just fucking... For, Israel's not going to be able to do anything about their neighbors. You're, you're living on a cul-de-sac with yeah. crack addicts who fucking are trying to stab your dog. And you, you mistakenly think, oh, we just want to get along. They don't want to get along. They want you dead. They're fucking nuts. It's never going to work. And the example is like people like, remember you used to have roommates? Well, you were rich at 20. But I, I always had roommates and roommates and roommates, you know. And you'd get these, sometimes you have these really fucked up shitty roommates. Like I had a roommate that took a hammer to all the dishes in the sink. Just literally took a hammer. So I had fucked up roommates, you know? But what would happen is, like, you'd talk to people, and they go, I got a fucked up roommate. And then I'd go, you got to move out, because this guy's going to kill you in your sleep. And they go... Israel's got to move out? Yeah, they go, I put the cleaning... I put the deposit down, you know? It's my $489 that they should move out. And I go, they're not moving out. They're going to fucking kill you. Get the fuck out of there. And they're like, why should I move out? I put the... Because you're going to fucking wake up and this guy's going to 
be holding a machete over your head. That's why. It's never going to work. Move to Baja, California. Tons of desert. Tons of ocean. It's really the same. I did the math. The ambient temperature is like the same, like year round. <laughs> it's, it's desert meets the sea. Tons of space in Baja. And nobody could use Jews more than Mexico. They're literally short on bean counters, ironically. They need the and, Jews. And the Baja Strip has the exact same ring to it. Yes, right? and the Baja oh. Strip. They need the innovation. They need the technology. They need the you know sensibility. You know, they need the Jewish point of view and energy. Mexico would be a thriving place if it just imported some Jews. And they, by the way, move out. The, the Muslims are going to all fucking behead each other. It's, it's, it's all going up in a, in a fire over there. So just go to Baja. And, so and they'll be awesome neighbors, too. So is, let's hypothetically, Israel just pulls up in the middle of the night, like does a Baltimore Colts. Just That's right. Relocates That's to right. Baja, California. What do you think, Adam, specifically happens in the region if Israel just is no longer, there is not a single Jew Maybe like three or four floating around, but just now it's just real estate, and yes. you got you know you got Egypt, you got Syria, you got Lebanon. Like what do you what do you think would happen to that region? They have to find a new group to kill, so they'd have to sort of take a vote on like what tribe or who they want to kill now, because they need a new group to kill, and they might send a few people over to Tijuana or Baja or Rosarita or something just to try to mop up some Jews, and they might focus their <laughs> ire. On, well, they hate Jews. They want to kill mop Jews. Up. Just mop up some straggler Jews. They come to. They probably come to you know United Maybe States the and try to kill the them for them a little bit. You know, the, yeah, we can't go yeah. to Mexico. It's dangerous. There. Who's doing all the accounting for the cartels? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I. But eventually, they'll start just killing each other, killing whoever's least like whoever the dominant tribe is. So that's okay. what they do. So, so just moving on, moving on to Israel. But Israel, moving on to Baja. I, I mean, I checked the square footage, the mm. acreage. It's about the it's, same. No, it's bigger, it's right? It's bigger. You got a lot more room in Baja and the same temp, same environment, same thing. You just, you'd set up there. They'd, te- they'd fucking dominate. It'd be the best thing that ever happened to Mexico. You don't think San Diego would be like, Jesus, look, we got these oh, fucking man. Jewish neighbors now. Jewish guys mowing my lawn. <laughs> Jewish guys doing center block work in my backyard. Human, human wicks. The wall has to be a lot smaller to keep out the Jews. Where'd you get that dreidel? I bought it from this Jew on the side of the freeway. He was selling dreidels oh, on the side God of the freeway. Bless him. Yeah. I still love mm-hmm. your bit about Hasidic Jews or human wicks. How come, how come more Hasidic Jews don't catch fire? <laughs> I've never just, done it on stage. But it's just, like, wait, everything about them, just like it's just all dangling. They're all fucking beard and sleeve, and they're kindling <laughs> fucking sandals every night. You know? Yeah, everything's just dangling over flames constantly. The, the payoffs, yeah. you know, everything. Yeah, yeah. They're giant wick. Yeah, you're right. No, it's your joke. Oh, it's Remind, my joke. Reminding yeah. you of your Remind bit. Remind me of my bit. He's like, that's, that's genius. That's you genius, thought of it. that bit. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Is there another story? There is. We have... Uh, the Menendez brothers yeah. Yeah, await a decision they hope will free them. Uh, yeah. they, they've never denied killing their parents, but uh, the reason was always they said they were sexually abused. And uh, there's new evidence that corroborates the longstanding claims and lessens their culpability. Uh, Lyle and Eric should have been convicted of manslaughter instead of first-degree murder. Uh, and if they had been, they'd be... They'd have received a much shorter sentence and been out of prison a long time ago, and it looks like it's a new. They evidence. look, they look great. Oh yeah. Have you ever seen the? Have you? You guys know about the Mark Jackson basketball yeah. card with them in the background? Yeah, That's yeah, one yeah. of the most amazing yeah. things ever. There's a new evidence that includes a letter that Gardner says was written by Eric to Eric's cousin uh, in December 1988, about eight months before the crime. The letter reads in part: "I've been trying to avoid Dad. It's still happening." But it's worse for me now. But I, every teenager sends one of those letters <laughs> off. I sent my dad's butt fucking me letter off to my cousin Greg. He wasn't fucking me at the time, but how I was ben like, Stiller in case the shit goes down, I want to be covered. How was you know? Ben Stiller and I played Lyle? Look at this. Yeah. Um, all right. So, how long have they been in for 30? Yeah. 20? Yeah. How long? Yeah, it's a, a early 90s. Uh, they should yeah. be out. They should be out. As yeah. someone, I think the only guy at this table that's actually gone repeatedly to speak to guys that are in prison without parole. Uh-huh. It's my, I love that you just assume that about me. That's not what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my takeaway every time I leave is 
it's it just it changes if you ever go into prison and meet somebody that's been there since like 90 or 88 or 98 it just is so inconceivable that this person's been here for this long because when you meet them they're not like a guy like stabbing your father or stabbing like somebody or beating an old lady to death or whatever they're just guys just making just yeah i made a horrible i, I i'm not eloquent in this but it's just like no I'm we went, send them home we did a man show bit where we went to prison and they put us in uh the good the well behaved group you know you want your freedom you know, relatively you can be in this group but you yeah. can't fuck with other prisoners or yeah. we'll pull you out of this group so it's a sort of get along group and there was a guy i'll never forget this guy he he played the guitar um, he he wore glasses. He looked like Miranda's pussy whipped husband from Sex and the City. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like that guy. It was just like a nice looking, kind of unassuming white guy, you know? And I, I was like, so first things first, he's just he's like 35, you know, he's playing the shit out of this guitar. And I go, uh, well, that's nice. They let you bring your guitar in or pick up with the guitar, you know, where you left off or whatever. And he goes, oh, I didn't know how to play the guitar when I got here. And I was like, oh, but you're so good on the guitar. He's, yeah, I've been here for 15 years. Yeah. Like, I, I started playing when I got here, or learning. Now I'm good. He's this a sweet, like, unassuming guy. He had these, like, round John Lennon spectacles, you know. And I and I just said, so that's stupid of me. But I go, when are, you, when are you getting out? And he goes, never. Yeah. And I was like, but he's just, how long have you been here? He said, 19. And I was like, it was just... Oh yeah, it's, it you're really never, changes. You're never going anywhere. You're never leaving. Yeah. So Garagos represents these guys now, and there was a little bit of a breakthrough because there was some DA or something. It it doesn't look good politically for you to pardon the Menendez boys when you're running for office, but someone ran for office, won the election, and now they can do whatever, and uh, they're going to get out. And when they get out, they're getting paid because, like, remember when Leno burnt half his face off? Yeah, yeah. And I ran into him in Malibu, and I said, uh, Jay, you should come on the podcast and talk about it. And he goes, okay, but first I got to talk to people, and then I can come uh, on the podcast because they have an exclusive. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the exclusive for the Menendez story, that's not going to be – Two million bucks. That's going to be ten million bucks. You think so? You yeah. Think it's like still, there's, there's, pe- there are people like. Do you think it's still a hot story for them to get out and they'll they'll start to gin it up. We'll yeah. start to hear about it. We'll get a little into it, and there's going to be some bidding going on, and there's going to be a real premium for their sit down, like their first sit down. And uh, yeah, as I always tell everybody. I know the dad, I know the parents were horrible because I have twins. And if my daughter came into my son's room and was like, hey, I'm thinking about killing mom and dad on Sunday with a shotgun, what do you think? And my son went, This Sunday or the following Sunday? That meant we were fucking horrible parents. That's that's mm-hmm. my only head on this. This guy seemed like he was a horrible guy. And he did seem, and, and all the allegations of sexual abuse and everything were like inadmissible. But I think the real culprit, Dawson, you're going to have to do some work here, you and Byron. It just popped in my head. The real reason the Menendez brothers got locked up for life and the real reason OJ became a free man is the defense attorney for the Menendez brothers had fucked up Jerry Curl hair and Marsha Clark had fucked up Jerry Curl hair when she was trying to put OJ away. Unfortunate and hair, you can for sure. blame both of the, the either lack of conviction or the conviction yeah. on their representatives. Marsha Clark looked like Paul pa- pa- Gasol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and ostrich hair. Yeah. Oh, I could, <laughs> man, I could go a real deep cut. I'm for so you. I'm so pleased with myself. That's a good, that's 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 a good cut. You, you want to go deeper? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. There's an actor who played in the movie Earthquake. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Marjo Gortner. Marjo Gortner. 
Do you remember Marjo no, no, Gortner? No. So his name. He's a character oh, actor. He's a man. Man worked a ton. Jay's on Marjo Gortner to lose weight. <laughs> yeah. Marjo no, Marjo Marjo Gortner was a was a busy character actor who played w- a weird gay marine in the movie <laughs> Earthquake and used to put on in the movie a weird fro blonde wig. Hmm. I right, find that. Okay, find those representatives and then we'll we'll get back. Marjo Gortner without the wig looks like he could make Jay's oh boy. hot man uh, <laughs> list. Look at she's going Bleh! All right, am I right? Yeah. Am I right? Their hair lost the case for both their clients. Yeah. One of the citizens of Bernie Sanders California. lost uh, the presidency cuz all he needed was a comb. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Uh, uh, one thing I'll tell you is I love to run my comb on the water and and comb my hair with it, but not this morning. On the most important day, when I'm talking to millions of people, whose bird is that? <laughs> what is? I, I'm telling you, you're gonna know Margot Gortner. Was it Margot? Marjo. Marjo. Marjo, Marjo Gortner. Gortner. That fucking perm on Marsha Clark. She, she, I mean, you got that's like my sister's and mom. 1980. You come home, you, the whole fucking kitchen smells yes. that perm yes. smell. Yes. Everyone's walking around with aluminum foil in their hair. Yeah. And you're like, well, I've got to go outside. This, I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> Yeah, and she's like, "No, nah, no, nah, I got something real special for the trial." Wait, and then you know, she, I think their hair lost them the I'm cases. Not, I don't think you're wrong. I don't I'm know if you're wrong. right, but you're not. You know, now Mar- from the movie Earthquake. That's oh, that is need HIV plus. Mm. That he's, guy needs he's still, broth. Marjo still alive. Was, was that him? Up. It was Marjo? His IMDb is. Was oh, that the guy man. that just flashed up there? Yeah, but he's got the. He, I needed the wig from the mo- I need him from the movie Earthquake. Not he looks like from- the snooty guy from Benson a little bit in that picture. <laughs> his what's his IMDb, Joe? Mart is this I think I've got you here. Marjo Gortner Earthquake. Yes. yes. There he is. It's like it's- a Gatlin brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is riveting video. Vi- vi- yes, that's <laughs> good. It's good pot. All right. Well, I mean he's been in every movie. All right, so You're hey, gonna feel bad. Look at Marsha Clark right now, mm-hmm. and I want you just knee jerk response. Would you? Uh, That's I w- too. You took too long. Oh, you're right. What was your knee jerk? I'd, I'd rather, I'd, I'd, I'd rather um, throw five on myself. <laughs> what about Mason Reese on the left? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! What about Pete Rose over there? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what about the hit Pete king? The Listen, <laughs> what about the hit king? You're on the left? showing <laughs> a picture of. of your, all right, hold on. <laughs> The Menendez brothers, what the fuck is her name, by the way? We can't just keep going, what's her name? What's her name? Leslie Abramson, I think. Leslie Abramson. She looks like right. Pete You Rose need a picture from the tribe. Remember Not, Pete Rose had his is... elbow up on the dugout? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's exactly yeah. Pete Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Pete shot. You need it from the trial, not from 2011 or whatever. This is this is an old this is oh. not an old picture. You need so one it just, from the everything's trial. so humid. Like what, what <laughs> they just lived in a fucking sauna. Right. But you you stand with me. There are a lot of women in the jurors box. They don't respond well to a natural. They don't like a woman's hair. They don't trust. Oh. They, there, thank oh, you, wow. thank you. Actually, I didn't think they looked that bad. Well, now what? Now, Ace, I'm going to ask you the question. When you see that photo, when you <laughs> <laughs> would you? <laughs> would right. you? You would. Yeah, I mean, she, she kind of looks like Carol King or something. That's like Julia Louise Dreyfus's hair in early Seinfeld. Which I, is that it's sister, bad. That it's, sister it's, it's Marjo mom. Gortner from Earthquake. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying they're both their crazy hair's loss. They needed some relaxer and a hot comb. She they could have won age this thing. Well, does she live on the sun? Like that's they, they could have won these cases if they got their hair normal. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Or just so. redo the jury pool. All right. You know, it's interesting. She also represented Phil Spector. I oh, wow. Had, oh, wow. I wonder if they had a hair Inspired off. Inspired yeah. by. Wow. Yeah. So do they take the wigs? When you go to prison, do they take the wigs? They have to take your yeah, wig away. Yeah, Because yeah. all his pictures from prison are him totally bald. And so what, who was the guy in Trump's circle that, like, showed up one day to court in a wheelchair? Um, he oh. kind of looks like a captain at a steakhouse. Mm. Oh, uh, Roger Stone? No. Did he show up? Yeah, well, I don't want to play the guessing game. My bad. All right, <laughs> All let's right. move it along. All right, where's Marjo Gortner Jesus, this guy. from Earthquake? I hate this guy. <laughs> nope. Oh, yeah. Bad wig, but right. I not thought that was enough. Yeah. Jared Leto. 
right. This guy's been in every movie, Jay. You're going to need him for a reference one day. And he's a staff sergeant. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> with samurai knives. You ever with see the movie Earthquake? The no, I will Oh, know. you got to see it. It's, it's Erwin Allen. Speaking of movies, Ace, hmm. I did this movie called Sweet Dreams with Johnny Knoxville playing a guy that goes oh, to rehab. Yeah. All right, what's next? More news? <laughs> I got to hit it. I don't want to hear it from the publicists. Uh, uh, well, we, yeah. we were talking to O.J. Uh, O.J. Simpson's family declines to have his brain tested for CTE. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering... Wh- do the, does I, anybody on that side of the fence do anything good for anyone yeah. other than O.J.? No, but I'm also... I'm not going to pay you for your murdered kids, and you're not going to see if this guy had brain you know, trauma from playing football. If, he, if, if that trial happened today, don't you think that would be immediately what they went to? He had CTE. Oh, he yeah. He had CTE. Yes. Yeah, I killed him, but you know, I, got, you know, I ran into Junior Seau a few hundred times. Yeah. 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 And I'm, also... Because when I'm you, a time traveler. Sorry. You, <laughs> you <laughs> see... I realized... <laughs> A um, young Junior Seau, my last days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I ran into Manti Teo's girlfriend. <laughs> when you see his early playing days with USC and they're like talking to him on practice and stuff, he's got a helmet with just some foam rubber pads yeah. inside of it, like almost a suspension well, helmet. Nobody like really then. got a running start on the guy, let's be honest. Like, he, it's not like people were like teeing off on the juice. He's, he was phenomenal. He was, but you forget, like, there's a clip of him being tackled by, like, Van Egan or, or one of those, sorry, one of those Raiders linebacker guys when they do the crazy head hunt, you know, <laughs> forearm thing. Just right. literally just head hunt him, pull his helmet off, and, like, throw him on the ground. Like, back when you could do that. They're, they did a lot of like crazy forearm shiver, you know, coming over the middle. Didn't, line. didn't even throw the pass to the guy, just Lynn Swan, you know, flying Jack Tatum, you know, elbows. In Hollywood, I don't know why this just popped into my head. In Hollywood Henderson's book, which is fantastic, yeah. uh, they're playing the Saints, and Mike Ditka's the special teams coach for the Cowboys at the time. And at the time, the Saints had that kicker with <laughs> half a foot, Dempsey. Oh, right. Yeah. He had like half a foot. And, uh, and uh, Ditka goes, hey, I'm so sick and tired. They're watching film. He goes, I'm so sick and tired of this guy, this stupid kicker, sticking his nose in the pile like he's a football player. Henderson, opening kickoff, when they kick to us, you just ear hole this cocksucker, and you make sure he's fucking rattled. I'm tired of him pretending he's... So Henderson, like, the kickoff starts coming, and just he's a giant man, and just runs right at J- Dempsey, and just tattoos him, and just, like, m- almost murders him, right? <laughs> And what he says in the book, he goes, everybody knows he had half a foot, but nobody knows he had half an arm also. He had half an arm. But nobody knows about that. He goes, the only time I ever felt bad in my football life was that little guy laying on the turf, waving that little arm at me, going, you're a real man, Henderson, waving those little peas yeah. for fingers. He had a very deformed arm. I never too. noticed. I just had, had the half record a for longest field goal for was like it fair? He had a square 30 foot. years. Um, you could have put a fucking horseshoe in there. Hollywood, <laughs> I, he did. He had a special boot. Yeah, it was like a good boot. I club fucking foot. hate kickers. Hollywood so Henderson so that I'm swearing. won the lottery twice. Yeah. That's insane. Like big. Also, wow. One the, night before, the night before the Super Bowl, he's uh, smoking crack with hookers, and there's a knock on his door, and he opens the door, and it's... Uh, Ed Two Tall Jones. No, it was um, <laughs> Marvin Gaye, who was doing the National Anthem. He's standing, he goes, I heard you got rocks and bitches. Oh, and wow. And he's like, I do. And they just fucking both rolled to work. And Marvin know, Gaye Mar- shows up at his... He won the lottery three times. Marvin you know Marvin Gaye's four. last words? He was shot by his dad. What's going on? <laughs> I love that joke. Uh, <laughs> Have I never heard it? I made it up. Did you really? Yeah. That a boy, Ace. Shot by his dad. It was What's a cross dresser. <laughs> well, that has to be your last words before hey, what's your going dad. On? Yeah, a little different inclination. All right, <laughs> let's bring it home. Jay, Sweet Dreams is the name of the Hell movie yeah. with Jay Moore. Also, Bertram's going to do some oh, yeah. great... You can go watch yourself in the next room. We're going to show you a couple Bertram clips over there. Uh, it's out on digital April 16th. And then uh, Joe Prano, Dirty Sports is the name of the pod. It's available wherever you listen to finer podcasts That's right. as well. And he's got dates You look Canadian. Up you look like well. you're on SCTV in that oh, photo. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'll be at uh, New York Comedy Club Stanford April 25th. 
if anybody it, is in Connecticut. Very funny stand-up. I just watched him Thank do you, two 20-minute sets. Joe Prano is where you go.com for all the dates. Uh, I'm going to be in Salt Lake City, and I think Joe may be opening there, too, in uh, Utah May second, or sorry, May 3rd and 4th. And just go to AdamCurl.com for all my live shows. Until next time, Adam Curl for Joe Prano. And Jay Moore, say it! Mahalo. Mahalo.